So we're finally ready to translate Maxwell's equations from the language of vector calculus to the language of differential forms. And so in order to do that, we need two objects. We need this thing called the electromagnetic two field. So if we've got this vector field E, which is like the electric field, and if we have this uh, vector field B, which is like the magnetic field, then we can define this two form, which we'll call F. So notice it's E1 dx wedge dt, E2 dy wedge dt, E3 dz wedge dt, and then B1 dy wedge dz, B2 dx wedge dz, and finally B3 dx wedge dy, where obviously E1, E2, and E3, and B1, and B2, and B3 are the component functions of these vector fields. And these are all functions of x, y, z, and t. So the three space directions and the time dimension. Okay, and then we also need this thing called the current one form. And in order to define that, we need a function rho, and then we need a vector field j. So this vector field j is like the current, and then this function rho is like the charge density. And they're both functions of x, y, z, and t. And so this one form will be called capital J, and it will be rho dt minus j1 dx minus j2 dy minus j3 dz. Great. Now we're finally look, ready to look at Maxwell's equations with differential forms. So here's Maxwell's equations in the language of vector calculus. And if we build this two form and this one form by the pieces of all of the parts that are inside of Maxwell's equations in the vector calculus form, then these four equations are equivalent to these two equations involving differential forms. So the exterior derivative of this two form F is equal to zero, and the Hodge operator applied to the exterior derivative applied to the Hodge operator of F is equal to J, the current one form. And I should say that this Hodge operator is done with respect to the Minkowski metric, which is what we saw in the last video. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and dive into the calculation. So let's say we wanna go in this forward direction. So what I mean is we are supposing that these one, two, three, four equations hold, and we wanna show that these two equations hold. So let's go ahead and take the exterior derivative of f. So we need to calculate df. So I'll let you guys look in a previous video what it meant to take the exterior derivative, but what we need to do is sum over all of the partial derivatives of each of these while we wedge in the appropriate one form. So in this case, we're going to split this into four pieces. So it'll be partial E1 with respect to X and then DX wedge onto this, and then partial E1 with respect to Y and then DY wedge onto this and so on and so forth. But because of the anti-symmetry of the wedge product, we only need to worry about wedging in the things that are not parts of this. So the dy and the dz, because we know dx wedge itself and dt wedge itself are both zero. So that means taking the exterior derivative of this portion will give us dE with respect to y and then dy wedge dx wedge dt. And then we'll have plus de1 with respect to z, dz wedge dx wedge dt. Great, so that's what we get from this guy right here. Okay, so now let's see what we get from the next one. So from the next one, we'll have the partial of e2 with respect to x, dx wedge dy wedge dt, plus the partial of E2 with respect to, the next thing is Z, DZ wedge DY wedge DT. Great. Now let's work on the E3 component. So here we'll have the partial of E3 with respect to X, and then we'll have DX wedge DZ wedge DT, and then the partial of E3 with respect to Y, DY, wedge, DZ, wedge, DT. Like I said, notice that we don't need to worry about the partial of E3 with respect to Z or T, 
And that's because if we wedge those into this two form, this elementary two form will get zero. Okay, great. So now we're gonna do the same kind of thing with these magnetic field components. And here we'll only need the partial with respect to X and T, here the partial with respect to Y and T, and here the partial with respect to Z and T. So let's get going with that. So here we'll have the partial of B1 with respect to T, and then DT wedge DY wedge DZ, plus the partial of B1 with respect to X, dx wedge dy wedge dz. So that's what we get from this guy right here. Now moving on to the next one, partial of b2 with respect to t, dt wedge dx wedge dz. And then the only other one which won't be zero is the partial with respect to y. So we've got the partial of b2 with respect to y and then dy wedge dx wedge dz and then finally the partial of b3 with respect to let's see we have t dt wedge dx wedge dy and then we've got one more and that's going to be the partial of this with respect to z so let's fit that in here so partial of b3 with respect to Z, and then DZ wedge DX wedge DY. Great, so we have a full expansion of the exterior derivative of this electromagnetic two form. Now we wanna go ahead and start combining like terms. So this will involve some sort of commuting of the wedge product, but that's okay. So let's maybe look for everything that has a DX, a DY, and a DT in it. So maybe not in that order. So there we have dy dx dt. Then over here we have dx dy dt. So those two are gonna be like terms. And then finally, we should have one with the magnetic field. So let's see if we can find that one. So yeah, down here we have dt dx dy. So that means those can all be combined together into one thing. Okay, great. So now let's look maybe at everything with a D, Z, D, X, and D, T. So we've got that one right there. We've got this one right here. And then finally we have X, Z, and T. So let's see, that's gonna be right here. So we can combine those together. Now let's see what else we have. So everything with a Z, Y, and T. Okay, this one right here has a Z, Y, and T, and then also this one right here has a Z, Y, and T. Okay, and so now finally we need to look for everything with an DX, DY, and DZ. Notice the three things that are left over are all of those, and so those are going to all be like terms. Okay, great. So now what I want to do is maybe rearrange all of this into those things with like terms. So let's maybe go ahead and do that all at once. So on the last board, we did a big calculation of the exterior derivative of F, in other words, this electromagnetic two form. And we came up with the following three form. So we've got this partial of E2 with respect to X minus the partial of E1 with respect to Y plus the partial of B3 with respect to T times DT wedge DX wedge DY. And so I think it's really interesting that this can actually be described by components of the left-hand side of this minus the right-hand side of this. So let's maybe do that. So like we said on the last board, maybe it's more natural to rewrite what we had as components of this equation. So we've got the curl of E, the third component of that, plus the third component of B with its partial derivative with respect to T. And then we can do something similar for the rest of these. So now this one can be replaced with the second component of the curl of E plus the partial of B2 with respect to T. This one can be replaced with the first component of the curl of E plus the partial of B1 with respect to T. And then finally notice this guy down here has a slightly different structure, but we can replace that with 
the divergence of B. So that sets up a pretty clear equivalence between these two equations of Maxwell's equations in vector equation form and this single equation over here in differential forms form. And so now all that's left is to set up an equivalence between these two equations and this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So we just showed the equivalence between these two blue starred equations in vector field form and this blue starred equation using differential forms. Now what we want to do is show the equivalence between these two purple starred equations in vector field form and this purple starred equation which is in the language of differential forms. And we will do that by calculating this left-hand side. In other words, the Hodge operator applied to the exterior derivative applied to the Hodge operator of F. So the Hodge operator applied to F is going to require us to use the Minkowski metric, which we calculated last time. And in fact, last time we calculated the Hodge operator on all of the elementary two forms like this over here, dx wedge dt, dy wedge dt, and so on and so forth. So let's maybe actually just take the Hodge operator of F over here and we can use that as we move forward. Okay, so we get that. So we have star F is equal to E1 dy wedge dz minus E2 dx wedge dz plus E3 dx wedge dy plus B1 dt wedge dx minus B2 dt wedge dy and finally plus B3 dt wedge dz. Now we're gonna take the exterior derivative of that and so let's see what we get for that. So we're gonna have D star F so that means we need to take the exterior derivative of each of these. So we're going to use the same strategy that we did before. So we, here we only need to worry about the partial with respect to t and the partial with respect to x. So here we'll have the partial of e1 with respect to t and then dt wedge dy wedge dz and then plus the partial of e1 with respect to x dx wedge dy wedge dz like that. And then next, we'll have minus the partial of E2 with respect to T, DT wedge DX wedge DZ from this component, and then minus the partial of E2 with respect to Y, DY wedge DX wedge DZ. Great, now moving on to this one, we'll have plus the partial of E3 with respect to T, dt wedge dx wedge dy, and then plus the partial of E3 with respect to z, and then dz wedge dx wedge dy. Great. Now moving on to the, uh, the magnetic parts. So let's see, there we're going to have plus the partial of B1 with respect to y, and then dy wedge dt wedge dx. Then we'll have plus the partial of B1 with respect to Z, DZ wedge DT wedge DX, minus the partial of B2 with respect to X, DX wedge DT wedge DY, minus the partial of B2 with respect to Z, DZ wedge DT wedge DY. And now we finally have this guy right here. So that's gonna be plus um, the partial of B3 with respect to X, DX wedge DT wedge DZ, like that. And then next, what are we gonna have? The partial with respect to Y. So the partial of B3 with respect to Y, and then DY wedge DT wedge DX. Okay, so we're done calculating the exterior derivative of the Hodge operator applied to F. Now let's see if we can start putting things together. So let's maybe first find everything with a dt wedge dy wedge dz or some other permutation of this. So we've got this one right here. So dt wedge dy wedge dz. Let's see, we also have this one down here. So dy wedge dt wedge dz. And we've got one more, which is right here. Great, so those are our three 
things that have DT wedge DY wedge DZ or some permutation of that. All right, so now let's go with this next one. So maybe DX wedge DY wedge DZ. So there's one right there. And then there's one right here that also has three like space components. And then we should have one more and we do and it's down here. Okay, great. Now next we want to look for maybe DT wedge DX wedge DZ. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's see, we've got one right there. And then we have another one right here. And then finally our last one is right here. Then next, let's find DT wedge DX wedge DY. So we've got one right here, one right here, and one right here. Now, let's maybe go ahead and clean this up and then we'll combine these like terms. And I wanna point out that while I'm doing this, I will do the commutativity to change everything into the same order. So this is already in the right order because we have DT wedge DX wedge DY. But for instance, this one is in the wrong order. We have DX wedge DT wedge DY. So what we will end up doing is moving this T over here, which picks up a minus sign. Okay, so let's maybe go to that on the next board. Okay, we've combined all the like terms and we see that the coefficient of the three form DT wedge DX wedge DY is gonna be this partial of E3 with respect to Z plus the partial of B2 with respect to X minus the partial of B1 with respect to Z and then so on and so forth. Now the next thing that I wanna do is apply the Hodge operator to this whole thing. So I'm gonna put a Hodge operator here and then I'm gonna recall what we had in our last video, taking the Hodge operator on those elementary three forms to get the following results. So we can replace this one with DX, sorry, DZ, I should say, great. We can replace this one with negative DY. So DY, and then we'll change the sign over here, but I'll just bring this inside here and then change these two signs. And then the next one is going to be DX. So that's the Hodge operator applied to this. So let's maybe write that DX. And then finally, the Hodge operator applied to this is DT. Now, the next thing that I wanna notice is that these components are perfectly matched so that in vector form, you get something like this and in differential forms form, you get something like that. So in other words, if this holds over here, then this term can be exactly replaced with minus J3. This term can be replaced with minus J2. This term can be replaced with minus J1. And then this term can be replaced with rho. Making this whole thing equal to the current one form, which we called capital J. And that equivalence goes in the other direction as well, which is pretty clear. Okay, that's a good place to stop.